clergy and laity united for economic justice and community allies held a prayer vigil calling for justice and solidarity for vulnerable communities in front of Long Beach City Hall. Reverend Noel Anderson spoke about the sanctuary movement. All right, let's start with a little chant. How about sanctuary, not deportation? Sanctuary, not deportation. Sanctuary, not deportation. That's not deportation. All right, that's what we're here for, right? Sanctuary, congregation, sanctuary city, and we're going to become a sanctuary state, too, right? It's an honor to, to play a role in, in the national level with the sanctuary movement. And so I want to tell you all a little bit today about, about that work and how you all are part of a larger struggle. And as faith communities, we are called to this work of sanctuary. As people of conscience, we are called to this work. And a lot of times people ask me, Is, isn't this work, couldn't, couldn't people say this is illegal to house someone in our church? We hear that question a lot, that concern. And my answer always is that we have a higher law that we respond to. We have a higher power, and with people power, love will win as we work together. Love will win, as said, love trumps hate. You all know about the movement in the 1980s when they said that the Central Americans fleeing war weren't political refugees, when in fact they were. Thousands, thousands of churches joined together to help people come and find safety and find refuge. And eventually, they did recognize them as political refugees. In the Bush era, raids, once again, congregations stepped up. They came together, and they started, we started seeing these sanctuary cases, people living in the congregations. And then again, with executive action, just recently in 2014. Since then, we've had 20 public cases. And up until 2016, we had about 400 congregations that were engaged in the sanctuary movement. But something happened. After the election, we saw that move from 400 to 800 congregations right. throughout the country. Our movement continues to grow. We had 12 coalitions. Already we have 18, and that continues to grow in places that we didn't have it before, like the Midwest and the South. And we want to congratulate St. Luke's, and I think there's more to come, of sanctuary congregations in Long Beach. So together, this movement continues to grow, and I want to make a, a call out for the California Values Act. Now, this just passed the Safety Senate Committee today, so it's moved out of committee, and we need you all to make calls. You need to contact, uh, especially uh, Assembly Member Jim Cooper, and this will help protect people uh, here in California from deportation. It will help the confidentiality so that they don't share the information of undocumented people. It will help all of us come together and protect our brothers and sisters, no matter what their documentation status. And I'm also excited to announce we had our first sanctuary mosque in Cincinnati just last week. So the movement will grow. They will try to exclude everyone who is vulnerable, and we will do the. We will include all vulnerable populations. It doesn't matter, right? We we believe in. No matter where your background is, no matter what your documentation status is, no matter how Trump might try to attack people, we are called to be a welcoming people, and we will do that work together. Uh, my role, one of my roles as a national organizer is to help coordinate and, and build a strategy with the national strength sanctuary movement, and so, this, of course, has become increasingly more important in the current context of, of fear and hate that we have seen in our politics. And so we have seen this in, uh, incredible growth and movement of people of faith, but really all people, immigrant leaders, um, 
uh, refugee leaders coming together to to fight back and say that we are part of this struggle for human rights and we w will look to faith communities and faith communities are opening their doors to say that that you are welcome here and and no matter what your documentation you can find safe refuge here and in some cases we even have people live in the congregation and tell to fight their deportation order so that they can get a stay what's known as a stay of removal and so we've had 15 of those cases in the recent uh, just a recent couple years and we've been able to help stop those deportations keep those families together and have a uh, um, make sure that they get a work permit and they can stay here but now underneath the Trump administration we don't know what kind of policy they're gonna put forth and how many people that actually help with relief of deportation we're very worried about increased raids increased enforcement and so we're gonna do everything we can to organize together people of faith immigrants refugees community members community leaders to say that uh, immigrants and refugees are welcome here we don't want more enforcement we don't want more deportations and where we want our policies that that accept one another and and love one another as as we are called to do in all of our faith traditions and so we are coming together we're organizing and uh, we're we're doing everything we can to mobilize and organize people to stop these this hurtful uh, hateful politics and to stop these these harmful type of policies that will not just hurt uh, some but hurt all of us together.